way. All right. Okay. So we'll take this. We, we should get through this actually fairly quickly. I think I may have maybe two slides here. Express with a base of two, right? So the following numbers can be expressed. You don't need a calculator for any of these. Anything I'm about to do now, we should be able to do without a calculator. So the first question is, how do I express eight with a base of two? Well, that's not so hard at all, right? Two to what number should give me eight? Well, obviously the answer is two to the power of three. And you'll see why that's useful in a minute, right? So that one isn't hard at all. How about this next one? Four to the power of three. How could I express that with a base of two? Well, first of all, I'm gonna take that four and make that into two to the power of two. Then I'm gonna take that and raise that to the power of three. And therefore, if I multiply those two exponents together, that will be two to the power of six. So all I'm doing with each of these things is expressing it with a base of two. The first one was just simply two to the power of three. But four to the power of three can be two to the power of two first. And then we combine those two exponents to give us two to the power of six. Okay, so, so far so good. How about this? How could I express this with a power of two, as, as with a power of two? Obviously, it gets a little bit more intense as we go along. So let's first of all take the 16 and make that, well, can you help me out with what 16 is with a power of two? Two to the power of what gives me 16? Well, well, okay, true, that's true. What you just said is true. Well, actually, not two to the power of three, but two to the power of four. We'll get to the square root part in a minute. So two to the power of four times, and again, now this is the fifth root of the 32. And what is 32? Does anybody know what 32 is as a power of two? Let me take that off there. Two to the power of five, good. So two to the power of five. And then that is being also raised to the power of three. Okay, so I took the 16 and made it 2 to the power of 4. I took the 32 and made it 2 to the power of 5. I still have the fifth root. I still have the 3 on the outside. Now, let's keep going here. I'm going to know, and this was an idea that came up a few minutes ago from Kelvin. Kelvin was saying, I can actually express this as 2 to the power of 4 to the power of a half. That half represents the square root. And I'm multiplying that by 2 to the power of 5 raised to the power of 1 fifth raised to the power of 3. Why am I doing that? Because the fifth root of anything means the same thing as raising it to the power of 1 over 5. Let me say that again. If I'm Taking the fifth root of something is the same thing as raising that thing to the power of 1 over 5. So now all we have to do now is combine all of these things. Multiply these exponents. So that's 2 to the power of 4 to the power of a half, which is 2 to the power of 2. This is 2 to the power of 5 to the power of 1 fifth. 5 times 1 fifth is actually 1. So that's times 2 to the power of 3, right? Because this is 2 to the power of 1 to the power of 3. So that's just 2 to the power of 3. And then. According to, we, we should know that this thing can, when you have two things that have the same base, you can actually add their exponents. So 2 to the power of 5 will be the answer for that. Okay? All right. Now, this one is more tricky. Right? 12. Sorry? Yeah? Go ahead. Quinn? Oh, sure. Sure. Thanks, Quinn, for the question. Can I explain 2 to the power of 3 again? Um, the original question said, take the fifth root of 32, then raise that to the power of 3. So what I did is I took the 32 first and made it 2 to the power of 5. All right, that's all I did. The 32 is the same thing as if you put on a calculator 2 to the power of 5, you get 32. But then I took the fifth root and made it into an exponent. Right? That's what this next line is. So all I did in the first line here is I just simply took the 32 and made it 2 to the power of 5. Then I said 2 to the power of 5 to the 1 over 5 to represent the fifth, the fifth root. 
These two multiply to give me one quin, five times one fifth. That's like saying five over one times one over five. That just gives you one. And that one times the three gives me three. Does that make sense now, Quinn? Just wanted to make sure. All right, that's where that three came from. Okay, great. You're welcome. And then, of course, I just added those exponents together to give me uh, five. Okay. Now, how about this 12? Huh. How can I express that with a base of two? That's a little bit more challenging. Is there a way that I can express this with a base of two? Well, that's not as easy as it looks. But what if I said that this was equal to 2 to the power of x. What about if I did that? Would that give you an idea as to how I could express this with a base of 2? How could I figure out what that x is? It's not an obvious, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a number like 6 or 9 or 25 or 52 or a number like that. But is there a way that I could figure out what that x is that's going to make this work? 12 is equal to, I want, remember, the original proposition was to express all of these things with a base of 2, right? Some of these were easy. 8 is just 2 to the power of 3. 4 to the 3 is just 2 to the power of 6. When we take the 4 and take 2 to the power of 2 and then combine those together, I get 2 to the power of 6. This one took a little bit of work, but eventually we got the 2 to the power of 5 from that. But this one starts off with 12, and I'm asking, well, what do I raise 2 to, to get 12, right? What X can I put on 2 to get Give me 12. It's going to be a decimal number for sure, right? But how do I come up with that number, right? Can you suggest a way that I could come up with that answer? All right, let me ask the question a different way. How do I solve for x? Think back to the question we did yesterday on the finance thing where we're having to solve for x. How do I solve for x here? What's the next step in the process to solve for, I'm going to give you another hint, to solve for an exponent? Right? In math, when you want to solve for an exponent, what do you do? You take the logs. There you go. I got cut off. Okay. So let's take the log of the two sides. So the log of 12 is equal to the log of 2 to the power of x. Right? Let's take the log of the two sides. Now, why am I taking the log of the two sides? Because now we can use that thing that we call the power law of logs, which means... Let me just put this down some more here. Put this down some more. You know what I think I just... Oh, this is a different question. Okay, so let's see if we can do this. Can we put that x in the front? Yes, we can. That's what we said the uh, power law of log allows us to do. Log 2 is equal to the log of 12. And then we can now... To bring all of this down some more here and then we can now say okay that means that x is equal to the log of 12 divided by the log of 2 and by the way is there another way to express this this log 12 divided by log 2 think about so you said log of, log, oh, in fact, Brendan already has the answer. Brendan, if I'm if I understanding what you just wrote down, you actually have the answer right there, right? This is the same thing. If you, if you think about the change of base thing that we did yesterday, the log of 12 divided by the log of 2 is the log base 2 of 12. That's what this is. I wanted to find the base 2 log of 12. I find the log of 12 and divided by the log of 2. So now I can write the 12 as... 2 to the power of the log base 2 of 12, right? So 2 to the power of the log base 2 of 12 will give me 12. That's basically one way that we could have written 12 with a base of 2, by raising it to the base 2 log of 12, okay? Okay, Sindhuja. All right, let's see if we can... Um, do this last one on this page here. Oh, by the way, does this whole question make sense? I, they asked us to express everything with a base of 2. So we did that, right, by, first of all, taking the log of the two sides, 
using the power law of logs, so putting x in the front. Then, because x is in the front, I can isolate the x. And another way of expressing this is to say this. So now I'm saying this is equal to, the 12 is equal to 2 to the power of log base 2 of 12. Okay, last one on this page. Express with a base of 4 without logs. Now, the last time we did this, we used logs. I'm saying there's a way that we can do this without logs. So, this is equal to 2 to the power of something. 2 to the power of some number. We just have to figure out what that number is. And I'm saying we don't need logs. All right? And this is going to take us into our next thing, which is solving exponential equations. But... Can you suggest a way that, isn't it 4, 2 to the power of 4? Well, you try 2 to the power of 4, and you tell me what you get. Oh, sorry, with a base of 4. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah you're absolutely right. It's supposed to be 4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you for making that um, observation. It's supposed to be 4. With a base of 4. So the question is, actually, with a base of 2 would be easy, because 2 to the power of 5 is 32. So that's not what we should be doing. Okay, let's get back to this. So the base of 4 now, right? 4 to some. Now we can use logs. What if it isn't? Thanks for saying, by the way. What if it isn't without, with logs, without using logs? Can we solve this without logs? Is there a way that I can make the two sides have the same base, for instance? Can I express 32 with a different base? Can I express 4? With a different base. What other base can I express both sides to? Because if I get the both of them to have the same base, then we should be able to do this. Right? What can I express 30? Okay, there you go. So 2 to the power of 5 is equal to 2 to the power of 2 to the power of x. Great. Thank you, Roma. Excellent stuff. So the reason I'm doing that is because Eventually, this will give me what x is. So I can go back and put that x on this equation that I have, and I'd be able to, so I'd, and I'd be able to express with a base of 4. So let's keep going here. So this one is the same thing as saying 2 to the power of 5 is equal to 2 to the power of 2x. Right? The 2 and the x multiply together to give us 2x. All right. So now what? Now what? Hussein is absolutely right. The fact is that the bases is an equation. So if the bases are the same, the exponents must be equal to each other. So 5 must be equal to 2x. And therefore, x is equal to 5 over 2. That's precisely what that means. Okay. So now I can write the question the way it was intended. 32 is equal to 4 to the power of 5 over 2. I just expressed 32 with a base of 4. Now, before I move on to the next page, let me see if this makes sense, right? Should 4 to the 5 over 2 actually give me 32? Let me remind you what 4 to the 5 over 2 means. 4 to the 5 over 2 means the square root of 4, so that's the bottom number is the root, raised to the power of 5. Is that actually equal to 32? Well, let's see. The square root of 4 is 2, right? To the power of 5 is, in fact, equal to 32. So it is correct to say that 4 to the power of 5 over 2 is the same thing as 32. That's absolutely correct. All right? Okay, let's plot along here, folks. Let's plot along. Unless there's anything anybody wanted to ask, I think we should be good. Well, let's put this to use. We're going to solve some equations. Exponential equations. Using the same strategy that we just developed, trying to make the two things have the same base should make that work. So, what base could both sides of this equation have? Could they both be 4? Absolutely, they could both be 4. I'm not sure if you recognize that. But this side could stay as being 4 to the x plus 5. Does anybody know what I can raise 4 to? That gives me 64. It's not 2. Thank you, Chrisania. 
and Hussein, it's three. And then that is, of course, still being raised to the power of x. So I'm just replacing the 64 with 4 to the power of 3. And you can, on your calculator, you can figure that out and make sure that it is, in fact, 4 to the power of 3. All right. So now the two sides have the same base of 4. But let's just make this side here become 4 to the power of 3x by multiplying the two things together. And this side is still 4 to the power of x plus 5. Now, we just did this a few minutes ago. We realized that if the two bases are the same, then I can just ignore the bases and create an equation out of the exponents. So that should mean that x plus 5 should be equal to 3x. That's what that suggests, that x plus 5, the two exponents, these two parts here should be equal to each other if the two bases are the same. So let's bring the 5 over. Okay, Alexander, I believe that should be, you're saying 5 over 2, unless I made a mistake. Oh, maybe you are right. X, okay, so bring the, okay, yeah, okay, maybe you are. So that should mean that 2x, bring the x over there as 2x is equal to 5, and therefore x is equal to 5 over 2. Yeah, you're right. Now, as with all equations, you can actually go back and plug that into the original and make sure it works. And I leave that for you to do on your own. Okay? Let me pause for a second and make sure that everybody is on board with what we have just done. Does that all make sense? Give me a little sounding of the room there. Does, do all of those steps make sense? Perfect. And by the way, hopefully what I'm writing now isn't lagging as it was before. It doesn't seem to be. I'm looking at my other computer. And it seems like it's, it's, it's not in real time. Okay, let's keep going. Let's press along here. How about this one? Well, in this case, we may have, it isn't good. We may have to make a change of base. What base will make this one work? 4 to the power of 2x, so 2. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to make both sides have a base of 2. I'm going to say this is 2 to the power of 2. That's what 4 is to the power of 2x is equal to 2 to the power, well, we know what 8 is. 2 can be to the power, what, what can I raise 2 to, to give me 8? The answer, of course, is what? 2 to the power of, come on, what, 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 do, I, what do I raise 2 to that gives me 8, folks? 3, of course. So 2 to the power of 3, and we still have the x minus 3 on the outside. Okay. So let's just do a little bit more math here. This becomes 2 to the power of 2 times 2x is 4x. Now remember, you're multiplying 3 by both of these terms, not just by the x. That's a common mistake. I don't expect anybody in this class to make that mistake. But I've seen students do that. They multiply the 3 by the x. It's 3 times the x and 3 times the minus 3. Think of this as being like in a bracket. And this is being distributed into the bracket. So it's 2 to the power of 3x minus 9. Okay? And then we can now say that 4x, again, we're ignoring the bases now because the bases are the same, is equal to 3x minus 9. So what's my answer there? Who can answer the question at this point? Who can finish up this question for us? What's x equal to? All right, let's just cut to the chase here. What is the value of x? Alexander says x equals minus 9. Everybody agrees with Alexander on that? Does that make sense to everybody? Absolutely. Minus 9 makes sense. Okay. Just so you know, what we're doing also applies to an inequality such as this one. All right? So 2 to the 3x is greater than 4 to the x plus 1 can be solved in exactly the way that, yes, I just heard somebody with their hand going up. That was Lynette. Lynette, please go ahead. Sure can. So x equals minus 9 is what we got for that one. Okay? You're welcome. 
Okay, so it works also for inequalities. If I had 2 to the 3x is greater than 4 to the x plus 1, then it's what you expect, except my answer is going to end up being an inequality answer. So it's going to be still 2 to the 3x, I'm not changing that, is greater than 2 to the power of 2 to the power of x plus 1. All right, so that means that 2 to the power of 3x is greater than, remember, expand that 2. So it's greater than 2 to the power of 2x plus 2, right? Multiplying that 2 on both terms. You're distributing that 2 onto both terms. So again, my bases are the same. So now I can just ignore the base and say, okay, that means that 3x is greater than 2x plus 2. So what does my final answer say to this question? Right? What is at the end of the road on this one? Remember, my final answer must be an inequality, not an equation. It's not a solution to an equation. It's a solution to an inequality. What's the final answer on this, folks? Give me your, give me, give me your best guess on that. Not asking anybody in particular. There's no wheel spinning or anything. Just let me know what you think. If 3x is greater than 2x plus 2, then x must be greater than 2. Perfect. That's it. That's all. all right? We're not multiplying the two sides by a negative. We're not doing any of those things. So we don't have to flip the inequality. We're just simply moving stuff around, adding to the left, adding to the right, that kind of thing. And therefore, x must be greater than 2 is what we're looking for on that one.